Hey guys, welcome to another C++ tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you a new print function that is much better than C out in most respects. And I'm also going to be teaching you a little bit more about strings and something called a C string. So first, remember C out just print something to the screen. So say we have like an integer uh, int a or something and maybe a float f or float c. We could C out a and then c to the screen or something like that. And we'll say c equals uh, 0 point uh, big number. And then a equals 500, just some, or 5,000, something random. So this will print it to the screen. But you'll notice whenever we print out c, if I zoom in here, it chopped off a lot of the decimals. Now, we may have lost a few decimals because there's a floating point rounding error. We can't have an infinite number of, of numbers here. Eventually, we're going to get rounding error. Uh, because we can't store that much uh, precision in a float. If we wanted more precision, we could use a double. But besides that, we should be able to print at least a few more. What if we only wanted to to print out the first two significant digits? What if our what if our program only wanted to print out you know one or two significant digits, even though the number had a bunch of significant digits? Well, with C out, doing that is a huge pain. Instead, there's a function called printf. And this is actually a C function that you can, but you can use pretty much every you can use every C function in C++. So we're going to use printf instead and you're going to find that it is so much easier. It's a little bit more complicated to learn, but you don't have to memorize everything because there's tons of good documentation online. So if we want to get printf, we say we say include and then we say C S T D I O, which stands for C standard IO. So basically this is going to get all the C IO functions and give them to us. So now if we want to print something to the screen, we just type printf and then parentheses. And so this is a function call. And then in here we put a string. Now this string right here specifies the format of our output. We can do something like type hello world here, and that'll be our format string. And this has no variables in it. This is just going to be text. So if I run this, we should get hello world to the screen, and we do get hello world. Now what if we want to put variables in there? Well, unlike C out, we don't, uh, we don't add variables with the uh, insertion operator like this. Instead, what we do is we specify variables in the format string, and then at the after the string, we put commas, and then we put which variables we want to put in the strings. So I know that sounds a little confusing, but let's say we want to print out uh, hello, and then, so this is just like a random string. What if we want to print out this? We want to print out the same thing that this cout statement is printing. Well, first let's put the hello part. So we're going to say hello, and then a space, and now we need the variable a. Well, a is an integer. So the way we get a variable in there is we type a percent. Percent sign means I want to put a variable here. And then we type uh, a letter that indicates what kind of variable it is. Now for an integer, you type the letter d. And then we're going to do a space for this part right here. And then we want to type the floating point variable. And remember, a float, or any variable, is made with a percent sign, except a float uses the letter F instead of D. So this is going to say print out hello, then print out an integer, and then print out a floating point number, and then a new line at the end. Now we have to give it two variables because this string has two percents in it. For every percent in your string, or for every variable in your string format uh, specifier, you have to have a variable after the string. So we're going to type a comma. And the order that we type the variables here is the order that we use them in here. So first we're doing the percent %d, which is the integer. And in this case, it's the letter a for int a. And then we're going to do another comma. And then for the floating point value, we're going to type c. So that will print out the exact same thing. So we should get two identical print statements. And there we go. We get two identical print statements. So what if we want to do some formatting. Now that's what's really great about printf is we can actually do formatting. So let's say we want to write justify uh, this percent %d variable. So we want to write justify 5000 and let's write justify it by uh, like 10. Well to write justify you type negative 10 after the percent and before the d. Now don't worry about rem memorizing this because I'm about to show you how to look up the documentation. So that was actually left justification. 
negative 10 is left justification, positive 10 is right justification. Even I get confused, but it doesn't matter because we have so much awesome documentation. Part of this episode is about teaching you how to read documentation and how to actually look up how functions work on your own. I'm just kind of showing you what this does, and then you can easily, easily Google all of the different combinations of all the things you can do. For instance, if we want to show only two... Uh, two decimal points over here with the floating point number, we can type a dot and then a two, and you always type all of your format things in between the percent and the F. So this dot two is gonna make it so it only prints out two decimal points. So when I zoom in here, you can see it rounded to 0.55. Now let me go ahead and show you how to look up all this information. All you gotta do is open up your internet browser and type up here in your Google uh, a little thing or go to google.com and type C, C++ and then whatever function you're looking for. So if we're looking for printf, let me zoom in, you're going to type C++ printf and you're going to google that and the very first link that pops up like almost every single time is going to be some documentation. If it's from C++.com it's a really good bet that this is the best documentation you can get. So if you click on the first link you're going to get this uh, page right here and it tells you everything about the function, literally everything the function can do. This is called a document page. So when you come here, it tells you all the different specifiers. So remember, if we wanted to do a floating point value, we typed the letter F. See, it tells you right here, F is decimal floating point, and it gives you an example. It tells you all the different things. If you want an integer, it gives you a D right here. And it tells you right here, you've got all these different flags that you can put between the percent and the uh, number, or, and the uh, specifier up here. So we could do you know, uh, zero to left pad with zeros or something, and there's a whole bunch of cool stuff. This dot number right here is what we were doing to change the precision. And then down here at the bottom, it even has examples. So this is how you read documentation. You just Google it, and you look at this page, and you need to really get used to doing this stuff because there's going to be a lot of functions you come across that you don't know what they do. All you got to do is Google them and, and learn how they work, and it's really simple because the documentation will always tell you everything about it. Once you know how to do this, you can pretty much learn how to program on your own. I'm, of, of course, I'm still going to be making these tutorials, but if you ever need to know something more that I haven't taught you in a tutorial, all you got to do is Google the function call and you'll be just an awesome programmer once you learn how to do that. Documentation is just absolutely beautiful uh, for learning how to program. It's, it pretty much specifies all of the C standard library and, and everything you could need to know. So enough rambling about documentation. Let's move on to uh, the string stuff I wanted to talk about. So what if we want to print out a string? Well for a string we type percent %s. So I'm just going to get rid of this hello part and I'm just going to print the string. So we'll get rid of this, we'll get rid of this, and we'll get rid of this. So let's make a string that we want to print. We're going to say string uh, my name equals Ben, like that. Now if we want to type, uh, if we want to print the string, we can't put my name here, and it's, it's, it's not going to work if we do that. Like, we can run it, but it's probably just going to give us garbage. Let's go ahead and run it and see what happens. See, we zoom in here, and we get a bunch of random crap that doesn't really make any sense. And the reason it doesn't make sense is because printf is a C function, and string is a C++ type. Integer and float, those are C types too, but string is not. It's a separate thing. The way sh strings work in C is they use some, they're, they're specified with something called a C string, which is just an array of characters. You know what a character is, a char. It's just an array of these, and when you think about it, that's pretty much what a string is. So we can actually make our own C string. If we type char, and then we'll say my string, and what we do is we specify that it's an array with this, and I'm not sure if I taught you this, but whenever you make an array, uh, you don't have to put the number in here with the size, as long as you're initializing it on the same line. So if we say equals something, and then we say equals uh, uh, Benjamin, like that, what it's going to do is the compiler is going to count these letters, and it's going to basically put the correct number in here and make it the correct size. So we can do this. Now this is a C string, and this is a C++ string. So we're going to say C string, C++ string. So let's try C outing the C string instead. If we put my string there, which is a C string, and we run it, now it's going to work correctly. We're going to get Benjamin. Well, how do we turn a, reg a C++ string into a C string? Well, luckily, whenever they were making C++, they thought of this. All you have to do is call a function called dot uh, C underscore str. And what that does is it basically returns a C string that has uh, the exact same contents of uh, your, your normal string. 
And it's actually a really cool thing. The way strings work is they are a class that has a C string in it. All these extra functions and stuff just give basic functionality to a C string. So this dot C string val uh, function right here, all it does is return the C string that the actual string variable is storing internally. So now if we run it, we're going to get bin printed to the screen because it's going to return us the C string uh, version of our string variable, which is the actual internal data. Now, what exactly is a C string? I told you it's an array, but what if we want to initialize it, because uh, this is a special way to initialize a C string. We can also initialize it like an array, like we normally do, uh, where we do a initialization list and then an array of characters. So we could say B comma E comma N, like this. All right, so that's going to initialize us with the string bin, right? So let's try printing that and see what happens. So let's go ahead and run it. And we get a bunch of garbage. What? What happened? I thought a C string was just an array of characters. Well, it is, but it's a little something more. It's not just an array of characters. It's an array of characters with an extra letter at the end called the null terminating character. Now, we have to type another comma and then the character slash zero like that so what this character is is it's the null terminating character it basically tells our program that this is the end of a string the way strings get printed out is you can basically think of it as i'm looping through this array i'm using a for loop to loop through but i don't know how big the array is i don't have a, an integer that I'm, I'm looping to i don't have a size variable i'm just going to keep looping forever until i hit this a null terminating character so this would be like a for int i equals zero i is less than infinity i plus plus but whenever we reach a null character we return and we just print out everything that we've had so far. So this is how strings are actually ended. And actually when you make a string, when you make a string, uh, my string equals uh, Jeb or something, this actually has a null terminating character at the end. It all handles it for you. You don't normally know that null terminating character is there, but there is a null terminating character there. So whenever we type, for instance, my care my string equals Ben like this, this is actually four, it's actually making a string that is four characters long, not three. It's B-E-N and then a null terminating character. If I try to type a three here, uh, because this looks like an array of three characters, it's going to give me an error and say, error value of type constant char four cannot be initialized to a char three. But if we change this to a four, then it's going to work perfectly because it has to have that extra new, that extra null terminating thing. So now you know what a string actually is. A string is just a wrapper. Uh, and whenever I say wrapper, a wrapper means it is extra functions, basically, that provide extra functionality to something simple. And in this case, a string is a wrapper around a C string. At least a C++ string is, I mean. So now you know how to use C strings. You know how to use C++ strings. You know how to switch between the two. You know what they are. You could even make your own C string from scratch because you know what the null terminating variable is, or the null terminating character is. And you know how to use printf, and you know how to use documentation. So you can actually go Google printf and actually you know play around with this. I encourage you to go play around with printf, try to make some cool stuff. Uh, one thing you could try doing is uh, using printf, and I'll give you a hint. If you go down here, there's this uh, star ver this star specifier, and then down here, I think there's an example, this width trick right here. Take a look at this one and try to use this trick to, to use a for loop that prints like a pyramid on the screen of letters. So it, it would look like a dot and then dot dot. This is terrible dot and then dot dot and then dot 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 or something like that uh, let's see try to print giving you a little assignment try to print something that looks like uh, this and then it keeps going uh, for however big you want it to be so like print out a diamond or a pyramid or something see if you can figure out how to finagle printf to do that which you totally can if you think hard enough and you read the documentation and you play around with it a little bit so thanks for joining me guys uh, i know this was a little bit of a confusing episode uh, but you know we're programming sometimes it's a little confusing hopefully you understood all this if you're confused just comment and of course i will answer your questions or provide you with better examples thank you very much